Hi, I'm Dr. Nicole Chenet of Sleep Apnea Dental Center of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. What I'm gonna do with my patient here is first have her take a nice deep breath with her mouth closed. So can you go ahead and just take a nice deep breath with your mouth closed for me? And what I want her to do is appreciate what that feels like for her. Commonly when we have patients with obstructive sleep apnea, there's some form of nasal congestion um, and it's usually not easy for them to breathe with their mouth closed and just through their nose. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna have you do is can you give me a snore both ways with your mouth closed and your mouth open? You hear a little bit of a drag there, right? So what I'm first gonna use is I'm gonna use this little gauge and this is at a four millimeter setting then eight millimeters, 12 millimeters, and then that would, and so on. I'm anticipating we're gonna find out pretty quickly how she feels. So I'm gonna set this in, okay. All right, gently back down. Take a nice deep breath for me. When you take that deep breath, was it easier for you to get that air into your lungs? Did it take less effort to breathe through your nose or did you not notice the difference? You notice the difference. Great. Okay. Keep your lips closed. Can you try and snore for me? Good job. A little bit difficult, huh? Let your lips come apart a little bit, but keep your teeth there. Try and snore for me. So a little bit better, but still you hear a little bit of, of, of resistance and drag. Okay. Open big for me. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the next level, oh, right down. Bring your teeth forward a little bit. There you go. And I know it's a little awkward, but can you close your lips for me? Okay. So see how I have that? Is it much more difficult to snore? Yeah. Surprising, huh? Okay. So now, what I know, open big, is that she's going to fall somewhere in between the range of having a 4 millimeter vertical and an 8 millimeter vertical. Okay. The other thing I know, bite down. Bite down. When she bites down, She's, she's class one, she's got a little bit of a crossbite here on her canines. So I'm just gonna bring her slightly forward, just about two millimeters so that her upper and her lower teeth are even. We call it edge to edge. The next step is we're gonna use our, our more detailed gauges. So I'm gonna insert that in, open big, and it has a nice little notch. Okay, back down. Take a nice deep breath for me. That felt really nice. Now, let me ask you a question. Was that improvement in breathing just as good as the last time I did it? Or not as good? Just as good, okay. Can you try to snore for me? So it's a lot more difficult for her to snore there. Now I'm gonna try in the six millimeters of vertical opening and bring her end to end, just in the same position as she was with the four, four millimeters of vertical opening. Open big. Position. So good. Keep that nice and level. Take a nice deep breath for me. And this is where I ask the patient, which one makes the breathing easier? And wh which one would you say? This one. Okay. I was kind of anticipating that. Now, can you try to snore for me? And what do we have? We have some nice, good breathing. This is a great way then to start the patient out in this position. Did that feel like you had any jaw strain when I did that? Not really. Not, not bad. So this is a nice way to be conservative, yet to um, engage the patient out of the gate when they can appreciate that there's a difference. She herself can feel it, and she's helping me decide what position is a good place to start for her. Many factors come into this. If you have a patient who has a lot of jaw pain, headaches, you may be a little more conservative with them than somebody who isn't experiencing those symptoms. So next what we're gonna do is, now that we know we're gonna do six millimeters end to end, I'm gonna use bite registration material. Again, it's, it's a fast set. On the upper and lower, you want enough there to capture those premolars and molars. Okay, come forward, bite down. Oh, perfect. Very good. Now, make sure the patient's staying in position. Make sure they're not sliding around. And then what I, what I personally like to do is I like to fill that in. And so then this allows the lab to be able to fully set in. See how that's covering most of this? And then the lab has a very good idea of where that protrusive bite is. 
This takes 30 seconds to set up. In summary, this technique is a great way to get an, a starting position for your oral appliance. It engages the patient. They now can understand what you're going to do with the oral appliance. And um, I think the one thing that's so important about this is that you have them laying back, so you have them laying supine, which is where a lot of patients get into trouble with obstructions and snoring in the first place.